It is Thursday night and um, it's been a really crazy week for me. Coming back from RTC and all the work that I did to get there and to be there and to then come home from there, I find like I'm just trying to catch up. And I was trying to do a Facebook Live, but the signal isn't strong enough. So um, I just decided to do this video on YouTube and I'll post it and you can just watch it at your convenience, right? I, um, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well. You're doing so great, checking in with your workouts, being consistent um, with your walks and everything. And I'm just super pumped. And I'm just really getting the sense that we're all coming to a place where we're, we're kind of with this group ready to like take it to the next level. And I don't even mean that as like harder workouts, so don't freak out, but just even better quality, a little bit more, um, a little more skill, a little bit less at the introductory level. And again, like I said, don't be scared. Um, but just refine what it is that we're doing. And um, and that's super fun to see, right? Because when you think about it, most of you started with me in October of last year if you did the POP Challenge or in December if you did Wayfair and Wellness. And it's been a while, right? So you've been working out with weights, you've been doing this kind of workout at home um, for a good chunk of time. And um, you're just getting better and better and you're getting stronger and stronger, which is why so many of you are talking about um, it's Thursday night, right? Come on. Um, what, what's going on with you um, when it comes to weight and whether you need to buy more weight and all that jazz. So it's it's just super cool. And after spending a weekend with a bunch of strength nuts where we talk about fitness and all this stuff and how to work the body and people working with their clients, things that they can do, I'm just like, I'm so stoked and I'm just really um, inspired by each and every one of you, right? Because you're doing this, you're doing your fitness, you're walking, you're making mindful decisions about nutrition, in addition to all the other stuff you have going on, right? And so many of you have huge things going on. Traveling for work, raising kids, jobs, the demands of jobs. Many of you have job opportunities, potential for huge changes in your life, right? Then it's just like the everyday work of just like, doing whatever your job is, whether it's like an occupation where you're going to workplace or whether you're working at home, whether you're raising kids and staying home. It's just like, it's just amazing to me because what it means is that you are making decisions on a daily basis to do the harder thing, right? And not just be complacent. And it's not always perfect. And there are plenty of days when you rest or you decide, oh, workout's not gonna happen today. But then you do it the next day or you do it later, you know? And that's what it's all about. That is the way that I have been able to achieve any of my goals that I've had, specifically the ones in fitness, right? Um, I talked a little bit on my blog and in my newsletter, which probably you've seen, about going to this Russian kettlebell certification, right? As someone, I've been doing kettlebells for like two years now, almost two years. No, more than two years. Oh my gosh, I don't even know. I can't even pay attention to the time. More than two years, yeah. Okay, so two and a half years or something like that. And I've been following all the different groups and like, if someone ever told me I could go to RKC and like do the certification and actually pass it, I was like, no, that's like a pipe dream. You know, a goal, actually that was one of the goals that I had this year to try and do um, before my birthday. But I didn't honestly think it was possible. But the thing is, is I went and I did it, but I did it doing the same thing that you all are doing. And that is just showing up as best that I can, as often as I can, banging it out, keeping the intensity up, doing it amidst all the other crazy stuff I have going on in my life. And then moving on and being like, well, that will have to do. What I did today will be enough because I have my kids or I have this I have to do for my husband or I have to do this for my life or I have to do this for my coaching business, all these other pieces of the puzzle, right? We don't have the luxury of just like, sitting around exercising all the time, right? So we have to make it work. And you're all doing that, you know? So when I was there this past weekend, and I know this sounds super cheesy, but I kept thinking of you all, and I kept thinking about how, like, you know, I was doing this thing that was super important to me. It was a, it was a big goal for me, and, it, and, and I was doing it doing the same stuff that you all do. So the victory of getting the certification is huge. But like the victory of you guys, you know, coming home from work and being tired and pushing through and working out or the victory of you working out amidst all your kids 
or um, you know, whatever other crazy stuff you have going on, it's the same. It all comes from the same place. So anyway, okay. So, um, so what I want to talk about tonight specifically is fitness for fat loss. And then really I want to talk about cardio a little bit because I asked a question earlier in the week about cardio. Um, so yeah, I want to talk about that. Um, okay, so this is the thing. I'm a fitness coach and I am super into fitness and strength training and exercise and all that jazz, right? So I'm always going to encourage you to do that. When you run into a plateau, whether you're not getting, when you're not getting results as fast as you have, if, um, you know, you're not just seeing the changes in your body, then a lot of people's default is to think, oh, I need to work out more often for longer or at a higher intensity. And so what I wanted to tell you really quickly is the hierarchy of um, the variables that affect fat loss, how you look in your body, okay? The most important thing is nutrition. Nutrition is always the most important thing, okay? Nutrition, then sleep, then stress, which is tied to movement, right? Because we talk a lot about movement and how moving our bodies helps to alleviate stress, moving our bodies at a leisurely pace, but just staying active, you know, it really helps to keep stress. Um, it actually stresses our bodies to be sedentary for too long, okay? It's not a good thing. And then at the bottom of that list, right? So we have nutrition, sleep, stress, you know, sleep and stress and movement are, are really all very related, right? Um, and then exercise. So I'm a fitness coach and I do exercise coaching because I know from experience for myself and working with and knowing other people and talking to other people that exercise is the thing that helps keep people on plan most, most effectively um, when it comes to nutrition, sleep, um, stress management, and movement, okay? But that doesn't mean that if you're not getting results that you need to exercise more. No, exercise is super important. It's a really big piece of the puzzle because when we are in a good fitness practice, we tend to eat better, right? We tend to sleep better. We tend to feel a little less stressed, right? Because we're getting tension out, even though exercise is a stressor, and I've talked about that before. It does actually raise your cortisol levels. Um, but we still, we're alleviating tension. We're going to our workouts to kind of work things out mentally and physically, and then that helps to de-stress us, right? And then in addition to all that, we are more prone to be walking and staying active because if we're already exercising, we want to keep that momentum going, right? So exercise is super important because it helps us to be faithful in these other more impactful areas, sleep, nutrition, stress management, and movement, right? But that doesn't mean that exercise is like the biggest piece of the puzzle in and of itself. It's, it is because it has such a huge effect on how people do these other things. How many people do you know, and maybe you know yourself, I know I'm like this. If you don't exercise and you kind of like just sort of stop doing all the other things too, right? But once you start to get into like the exercise mode and good about fitness, then you start paying attention again to your nutrition because it's like, oh, well, you know, and simple things like drinking, right? If I have too much to drink, then I'm not gonna wanna get up and exercise tomorrow morning and the only way I get my workout in is if I do it first thing in the morning. So then we start making these really good choices about sleep and nutrition and, and stress and movement um, when we're also exercising. But you really have to be careful and I see this a lot with people. I definitely see it in the fitness and exercise world. You see it at the gym. You, how many of you know people that you see maybe running in your neighborhood or you've seen at the gym or maybe you know personally that they're like exercising five or six days a week and they're not, they don't look any different, right? Their bodies aren't changing and that is because the, that is not the dial to mess with too much when it comes to results. The dial that you want to you wanna fuss around with is nutrition. Are you being disciplined enough in your nutrition, right? Are you, are you, taking more calories than you need? Are you overeating? Are you maybe eating for reasons beyond hunger? Which is, you know, something that all of us deal with. It's not, it's not a judgment, but it's just like, if you're concerned about your results, then really we gotta look to, first we look to nutrition and sleep. Sleep is huge. Sleep, a lack of sleep is a stressor. It's going to increase 
cravings, it's going to reduce um, energy, it's gonna make you feel more hungry, so sleep is a big thing. And then also stress, right? We talk about this, we've talked about it all the time, if you're stressed, you're gonna be hungry, you're gonna be in fat storing mode, you're gonna have high levels of insulin, high levels of cortisol, you're gonna be experiencing tons of cravings, right? Um, and if you're not moving routinely, if you're only ever exercising, then you're gonna feel stressed, your um, digestion is going to be sluggish. You're probably not going to be getting as good quality sleep, um, too. So you know. So I really want to just emphasize that even though I, you know, talking a lot about fitness, that fitness is not the biggest piece of the puzzle. Fitness helps us to be good with these other things. That being said, there are the most effective forms of fitness for fat loss. And then there's other kinds of fitness and exercise, and I'm gonna talk about the role that those guys play. So I have 15 minutes on YouTube before they'll cut me off, so this might end up being a two-part series, right? You guys know me to be pretty long-winded. Um, but I feel like sometimes I just like really repeat um, something that I wanna emphasize, because I really, um, it's important, right? So I just have to keep saying it again. So when it comes to fat loss, and I talked about this in a Facebook Live um, earlier um, yesterday, right? Because I had a, a guy named Rob, he wrote to me and he was specifically saying he wants to lose weight but he doesn't want to gain mass, right? If you were only ever gonna do one form of fitness to lose fat in the most effective, quick, most the quickest manner possible, right? The best thing that you could possibly do is strength training. Strength training is always gonna be the most effective thing and this is why. Strength training is so good for us in so many different ways. It is going, it's, it's super important for joint health, bone health, heart health, your muscles, right? It's really good for posture. All of these things are really, are super important for our whole body health, important for gut health, which affects like how effectively we absorb nutrients, which affects our hunger signaling, right? If we're not getting a lot of nutrients from our food because we don't have healthy guts, then we're going to feel hungry more often. We're going to experience a lot of cravings, okay? Um, strength training is important because basically, um, if you're doing strength training, you're helping your whole body to be healthy. Like I said, heart health is good. Um, joint health will be better. Bone health, you're accruing muscle mass. And the more muscles that you have, the higher your metabolic rate is at rest. That means the more calories that you can burn when you're not doing anything, okay? So if you never did anything but any, but one form of exercise, strength training would be the best, okay? That being said, if you strength train and you're not really vigilant with... Um, nutrition, then what you can do is you can build a lot of muscle under, un, like underneath this kind of layer of insulation, right? We'll call it insulation. It's fat stores, basically. So you don't have that super toned, defined look or not as much. Basically, you can get there eventually if you just keep lifting the weights and you really, and you're, um, you're not under eating, but you're not overeating the calories. What will happen is eventually the calories and you know the work will catch up, and you'll start to be a little bit more pronounced. Um, but you know we tend to kind of not want to wait around for something like that, right? We want to like be working on burning our fat stores while building muscle in order to be thinner, leaner, and then also have like a toned, defined look, right? We don't want to be skinny fat. We want to be like defined. Um, as we're losing our fat. And so that's why um, with this program, we do strength training to build muscle, to make you stronger, to make you in better shape for some of the conditioning work that we do. And also it's so important, like I said, for your health. Um, and then we also do conditioning. So like workout number five is a good example. We Some of the other workouts are more strength geared for sure, but I always go to workout number five because it's strength training in its truest form four rounds of eight to 12 reps, depending on where you are, of these certain exercises. They're whole body exercises, they're super hard and you're going as heavy as you can, right? But then some of the other workouts we do are more conditioning based, okay? We're using lighter weights, we're trying to move faster, we're getting warm, we're getting super breathless, and we are creating an oxygen debt that is going to, you know, we're huffing and puffing, right? And then also we are doing it with weights, which is great because not only are we creating this afterburn effect because of the oxygen debt, which means that basically we don't have enough oxygen in our cells at the 
time. We use it all up and then our body has to start um, resorting to different mechanisms. And the cool thing is, is at, in order to recover from this processes, the body starts using fat as fuel, right? So it's a great thing. And then we add to that, oh, running out of time. <laughs>